God damn it. Hello again and welcome back to Mimsy Park. Today we are going to be doing a new series, basically starting a new series of movie reviews. One that I've been wanting to do a version of for quite some time now. Basically what I've been wanting to do for a while is I've been wanting to start a Disney movie series. That's what I've been wanting to do. And what I originally wanted to do is I wanted to go from the original Snow White, the very first Disney animated film, all the way up through, I want to say, Lion King. The Little Mermaid or Lion King was the last hand-drawn animated feature film. So I wanted to do a series going all the way through all of them. And what I had done was I went through Snow White. I watched Snow White for the gajillionth time. And when I started doing it, I realized it just wasn't entertaining by myself. It basically and devolved into me talking about it step by step, but when you don't have somebody else to bounce the ideas off of, it kind of falls flat very quickly. And so I started thinking about it. I was like, well, how can I do a Disney series like I want to? And so basically what I came up with is we're going to go ahead and go through all of the live action remakes that they've been coming out re with recently, because we all know how I feel about the live action remakes not good and the first one we're going to be starting with is 2015's cinderella now we've got a few movies to go through and it's only 2020 2015 is when the ones i'm looking at started and these are live action remakes of the originals these aren't i haven't decided whether or not we're going to get into the live action movies based on the originals i.e mary poppins returns or christopher robin uh both great movies by the way. I was actually pleasantly surprised by both of them. My experience so far is based off mostly off of Aladdin because it's the only one I've watched from beginning to end because I was on a plane, had nothing better to do, and there's a video about it already if you would like to see that. I'll probably do it again, which I'm not looking forward to because it is crap, it's garbage, I hate it, I didn't like it, but we will go and do that again. However, today we are going to do 2015's Cinderella. It's not been a long time since this movie came out and we've got a lot of remakes to go through. I think like three of them came out last year in like a four month period. Whatever, we're gonna get through these. We're gonna get through these. So like I said, first up is 2015's Cinderella. I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. I was. It's not great. It's a good, it's a good retelling of the Cinderella story. It's not a good remake of the original Cinderella movie. Ever After was a good retelling of the original Cinderella movie, which had nothing to do with the Disney version, obviously. But I digress. This was not great. It was not terrible. I was pleasantly surprised in the sense that I went into this with real low expectations. I mean, real low expectations. Now we do get a little bit of a backstory of Cinderella in this. I mean, I know there's like a semi backstory. I mean, you know, she has a stepmom, you know, she has stepsisters, which means she must've had a mom. She must've had a dad. And we do get to see them in this movie, which was cool. But if, again, if we're remaking the original movie, we don't need that, but it wasn't, I wouldn't call it a negative point to this movie. Um, it does show the relationship that she had with her mom a little bit. Uh, she does show the relationship with her dad a little bit, a little bit more than the mom because it's Disney. So we'll lose both of them, obviously, spoiler alert. However, her name's Ella. It's her name in this movie. Cinderella ends up being a nickname given to her unwillingly her name is ella which drives me insane now i'm gonna say that i don't know i have not read the original cinderella story my experience is through the movie as is most people's experience i know the horrid things you hear about from the original story like how they cut their feet to fit into the glass slipper and how at the end of the wedding the stepmom and the stepsisters die because crows peck their eyes out or whatever it's it's it's, it's crazy but it's like a 700 year old story 
However, in the movie, her name's Cinderella. Now, it does give a little bit of backstory, that's all fine and well, but it just rubbed me so wrong that her name is Ella, and then she earns the name Cinderella in a negative way, but whatever. The other thing that really, really stuck out to me were the mice. The mice have no personalities. I mean, they do in a Disney way, but they, they don't talk. We see Gus Gus right off the bat right off the bat and her meeting Gus Gus and him being introduced to the group was one of the really cool things about the earlier movie it was not he's just there like the mice are just there they don't talk they don't have the personalities uh Brutus Brutus is in, in even there he's not even in the movie Lucifer is in there a little bit but Brutus isn't even in the movie. He does not exist in this movie. There is no mention of them having had a dog, of her missing a dog. He is nowhere in this movie, and that drives me insane because Brutus and the mice were really her coping mechanisms. She has a duck in this one. Cool, a duck. They changed things that I know are not supposed to be part of the core story but it's part of what made the original movie so special. And that's where my issue with this kind of stuff comes in, where you basically take these characters that really define the relationships that she has and you just flip them. There is a big middle ground between changing the movie almost completely and a shot for shot remake. And there's all this room in between, like the production design keep the core elements of the movie, change the production design. The production design in this movie is awesome. It was great. The interior of the house, the sets, everything, they look amazing. The environmental CGI looked really cool. I had to keep reminding myself that it's 2015, this is five-year-old CGI, whatever. So it does look a little outdated. You can tell that it's older CGI. However, it looks really cool with the environments with most of the characters does not hold up very well, in my opinion. Going back to the mice though, had they had real mice that were trained, and don't tell me you can't do it because it's in Willard and they had lots of them. You've got these mice, they're animated. They're animated already. You animated them again. Why not give them voices? Why not give them better personalities? Give them clothes for Christ's sake. Give, give Gus Gus his t-shirt. Like, just give him their hats. It makes so much more sense because you're retelling the story and you're not trying to make it more realistic because there's all the magic involved too. Now, I will say, Kate Blanchett and the stepsister, I don't know the actress's names, but the stepmother, uh, Anastasia and Drizella are awesome. Kate Blanchett is awesome in everything that she does and she does not disappoint as the stepmother. Not even a little bit. The stepsisters are pretty funny, actually. They're pretty hysterical, I won't lie. They were one of the things that made me start going, oh, I might not hate this movie. Because again, I went into this with a super negative outlook. And it actually did get, end up getting changed around a little bit. Not a lot, definitely not completely. But I did not end up hating this movie. I ended up hating aspects of it. Uh, I did not hate it in its entirety. So they were, they were really, for me, the saving grace in this movie. What, but again, elements of it were just awful. One of the biggest elements that rubs me the wrong way is none of the original music is in this movie. Not one song, not one, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They go ahead, they do cram it in at the end during the credits and they play I don't know the name of the song, but they play the main song from Cinderella at the very end, but it's nowhere in the movie. She doesn't sing, nothing like that. It's all background music and that drives me insane. And it's not that you have to have an all original soundtrack, but at least have the core, those songs made that movie. Not made the movie completely, but added something extremely special. It wasn't like a little thing that added it. People remember the songs still to this day from that original movie, and you just didn't even put it in there. You didn't even put it in there. For what reason? 
I know it seems like it's something small to get worked up over, but it means a lot to me. I did have an issue with how early she ends up meeting the prince. She meets the prince very, very early in the woods, but it's also how Drew Barrymore's character in Ever After meets the prince in Ever After. And so what I had to think to myself was this is probably something to do with the original story. And I'm pretty convinced that's probably what it is. Either way, it's not something that ruined it for me. Again, it stood out. It did stand out because it's not in the original movie. So that did stand out to me, but not did not ruin it completely. And it definitely does not ruin the whole him looking for her afterwards, not knowing her or any of that kind of stuff. I will say he sees her a lot throughout the movie and at the end is still doesn't seem sure whether or not it's her. It's like, dude, you, you saw her face. You, you, you saw it many times. Speaking of, I will say that in this one, the godmother, and we're gonna jump around here, I'm not going like in order or anything like that. The godmother does this little thing where she sprinkles dust over Cinderella to mask who she is to the stepmother and the stepsisters at the ball. And that was really cool. I think that was a really cool way of explaining away why they just don't magic, because in the original, they just magically don't recognize her. In this one, it gives a reason why. And that was actually pretty cool. I thought that was a pretty cool addition. Speaking of the godmother and that whole process, uh, Helena Bonham Carter, awesome as the godmother, but she's pretty much awesome in everything that she does. I will say it's basically Helena Bonham Carter as the godmother. Like she still does that wacky acting style that she does, but that's just her and that's why we love her. I really liked her as the godmother. I will say they CGI'd her before she does her whole transformation and everything. Like she's introduced as this hag and the CGI in that, that they CGI'd her is horrendous. It's awful. And I don't even mean like by today's standards. I mean by 2015 standards, it's terrible CGI on her. And I don't understand why they can't do makeup. Why you can't do makeup and practical effects. I know it's supposed to be easier, it's supposed to be cheaper or whatever. You've got the budget, you're Disney. Just makeup, makeup. You had a costume designer, you had a full crew for this movie, a nine figure budget, and you couldn't put in makeup for what turns out to be, I mean, the scene itself is several minutes, but the part where she's old is not. It's a minute and a half to two minutes, if it's that. I, I have an issue with CGI, with over usage of CGI, and this is over usage of CGI, and it doesn't look good, and to me, it feels cheap. Oh, oh. Speaking of cheap, let's talk about cheap tools in filmmaking. One of the top of them is narration. The whole movie is narrated. And I don't mean it's just non-stop narration, but it is narrated from beginning to end. A, it's infuriating because the original one had no narration because it was able to tell a story on screen. Second of all, or B, depending on if I said one or A at the first time, it explains things that it's already depicting on screen which means they don't think, they either A, don't think the audience is smart enough to understand what they're conveying on screen, or they don't have the confidence in what they're conveying on screen to think that the audience is going to actually understand it. The one that stood out the most, and I actually remembered it, is when they've come to Cinderella's house, and they've done it to the stepsisters, they're getting ready to leave, they discover Cinderella's there, and so they go up and they get her down from the attic to come meet the prince downstairs to go try on the slipper. As she's coming down, this is after the ball, this is after she's been all prettied up, and she is, as they put it, as she is, starts coming down the stairs, and she's going to be seen in her rags, as she normally is. They feel the need to explain to us that this is part of why this is such a big moment, because, She's being seen as she is, and it's the most vulnerable, and it's one of the most courageous things you can do, which it absolutely is, but does not need to be explained because you're already doing that. And it's a prime example of not trusting either the material or the audience to get the message across the way you want it to be put across. That was one of the biggest problems I had with this movie. The narration, the fact that they felt the need to narrate so much of this movie 
is infuriating, if you can't tell. The actors and actresses in this movie were very good. The dialogue was good. It was well written, except for the narration. So it, it's not that it was a terrible movie. It was a good standalone Cinderella retelling. It was not a good Cinder Disney's Cinderella remake. I know it got praised for staying true to the story, and it does in a lot of respects. In a lot of respects, it goes off like Lucifer and the stepmother. There's not a lot of scenes with them in it. There's a few, not a lot. Now, another really big scene in the movie that we all remember is when the dress gets ripped up and gets destroyed. And the scene in this one is basically the stepmother and the stepsisters kind of creeping in on Cinderella and cornering her. And it really does get your anxiety going because you start thinking of the original one where they just rip it to shreds. Nope, not in this one. They rip the sleeve a little bit. They rip a hem here. And they, I mean, they do ruin the dress, but it's not torn to pieces. They do it a little bit, a couple times, and then that's it. It's such a downplay of what is supposed to be a heartbreaking scene. And I know this movie has gotten praise for sticking to the original story, but I feel like maybe the people that are saying that are huge Disney fanatics like I am, which could be good or bad. I guess really depending on how you look at it. To me, that was a scene that was really played down. The pumpkin changing into a carriage scene was really cool. It was a little over the top. It was like, okay, okay, we get it, we get it. You can do amazing things with CGI. Now, I will say once it's created, like once it's transformed and they go from CGI to a practical carriage, it does look really cool. It, that 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 looked really cool. Like the inside of it, the, the, the intricacies of the design and everything, really, really cool looking. But I did love how after the godmother goes to offer to change the dress and make it lavish, Cinderella goes, oh no, no, don't do that. My, my, my mother made this dress and I don't want to change it. Basically, she says she doesn't want to change the dress. So what does the godmother do? She makes it bigger, she makes it prettier, she makes it brighter, and she changes the color completely. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad they changed it to from pink to blue. She's just like, I don't want it changed, changes it completely, and she goes, I love it. You do get to see a lot more from the prince's side in this one, which I actually kind of liked. At first, I was really reluctant to enjoy that, but I kind of liked that. It gave it a little bit more scope. You get to see a little bit more of the kingdom. Actually, you get to see a lot more of the kingdom. And a lot of that just has to do with the restrictions that they had back in the day, how long it took to make these things, how hard it was to animate. Like in Snow White, they actually don't have the prince in Snow White a lot because he was so difficult to animate. So the restrictions of back in the day are a big reason why we didn't see a lot of the kingdom. So it was really cool to see more of the kingdom and to get more of that scope and to see into the prince's life. However, one aspect of the prince's life that's really big towards the end of the movie is the Grand Duke. The Grand Duke that's going around and he's enthusiastically looking for the girl that fits into this slipper. Now we're going to skip over the fact that Cinderella apparently only has that shoe size. She's apparently the only one in the kingdom that has that shoe size because it seems to be a fairly large kingdom, um, even though the king or the prince does get mocked for being a tiny little kingdom. But it seems to be a decent sized kingdom and apparently Cinderella's the only one with that shoe size. Who knew? The Grand Duke is going around, but in this one, he's evil. It supposedly has to be an advantageous wedding. It has to be a wedding that is good for the kingdom in general, basically. And so in this one, he's evil. He wants that to happen and he makes this deal with the stepmother. And it's all very politically motivated. And I don't, again, understand why it didn't ruin the movie for me. I won't even lie, I, I, at the very end, I was kind of like, yeah, screw the Grand Duke. I don't understand why it had to be an advantageous wedding, but it again, was not one of those elements that necessarily ruined the movie for me. It was just one of those things that kind of stood out to me. I will say, uh, and Brittany actually brought this up, because as I stated before, in the original story, the stepmother and the stepsisters actually get murdered by crows at the very end at, at, at the wedding. 
It's either before or during the wedding. Uh, Brittany's actually read the original story. There's this transition from where after she tries on the slipper and it clearly fits like we all knew it would, there's this transition from the stepmother's face to the wedding. And the way they do it is they do a cross dissolve transition, which is basically where you have one scene fade into another one. As it does that, it fades into these two birds flying as it goes into the wedding. And it really did seem kind of like a nod to the uh, to the original story of the birds murdering the stepmom and the stepsister because it talks about how they were never seen again. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. Whether or not that was serious or whether because I just knew how it ended, who really knows? Overall, this movie, and I know I miss, I'm, I, somebody's gonna say I missed some points, I missed this, I missed that. The movie is like over two hours long. I mean, at a certain point, I found myself going, okay, I, I think, I think we can wrap this up at this point. But again, not a terrible movie, not great. Probably not one that I'll watch again. Definitely not one that I would pick over the three, four, five copies that I have of Cinderella. One, two, three, four, five. Five copies. Five copies of Cinderella because I'm a tool. Like I said, not a terrible movie overall. Definitely one worth giving a watch. Just, you know, keep your expectations down here. Overall, a good Cinderella retelling that does stay true to the whole Cinderella story. It really does. The cinematography is really good in this. I found out they shot it on the Ari Alexas, which of course they shot it on the Ari Alexa and they shoot them on that because those cameras are amazing. I wish I had one. I have no reason to have one, but either way, a decent movie, not terrible, not great. No, I know somebody's gonna say I missed something because I'm sure I missed something, but I'm one person with one brain that sometimes works functionally. Definitely give it a watch if you are feeling if you wanna go through these live action movies, definitely give it a watch. Don't expect too much, but you don't have to go into it with the negative mindset I went into it with, which was pretty negative. It was pretty negative. I expected it to be terrible and gradually throughout the movie found myself going, this isn't actually that awful. So I hope you guys did enjoy this movie review. This was actually a lot of fun for me to do. I will be doing the next one. I'm not sure what the next one is. I should probably find out. The next one that I will be doing, which again, Reluctant to do this. I'm gonna be reluctant for all of these. It's just it's gonna happen These originals mean too much to me for me to think that they can do it better so far They have not done any of these remakes better. They have done some of the remakes better than some of the other remakes um, Aladdin is so far at the very bottom of this list. There are only two Cinderella Aladdin on this list so far, Aladdin is at the very bottom. Cinderella has raised my bar for these remakes just a little bit, but Disney destroyed Star Wars and they destroyed Aladdin. So you'll have to excuse me if I go into these a bit negative, but that's just the way it's gonna be and that's what we're gonna have to deal with. So the next one up is The Jungle Book. So do stay tuned for that one. I really do appreciate you guys watching these videos. I have a blast doing them. It means the world that anybody even cares or is it entertained by me at all because I love entertaining people. We're up to 103 subscribers now, which is pretty great. And with that said, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Like the videos, comment, leave suggestions. I'm always open for movie suggestions. I love doing these. And I'm always, I would love for the community to get involved and start having a little bit more say so over how these videos are done. So like, subscribe, comment, stay tuned, and we'll see you guys next time.